everyone and welcome to BuzzFeed University. Today we will be covering one of the most important steps to becoming successful with your social strategy, the science to spreading content on the social web. I'm Jen Wallaceoff, the Director of Partner Education and Development. BuzzFeed University creates educational programs including virtual, like this one, and live events on the art and science of content creation and social advertising. If you have an idea for an upcoming event, we'd love to hear from you. So email us at BuzzFeedU, uh, actually BuzzFeedU at BuzzFeed.com. And if you hear something you love from today's conversation, tweet at us now at BuzzFeedU and use the hashtag BFU. If you have questions for Ben Ronnie, today's presenter, please submit them to all panelists in the chat section and he'll answer as many questions as he can. There will be a survey at the conclusion of this session. We ask that each of you fill it out to help us deliver great content that's most important to you. If you have any technical issues, please try logging back in. But don't worry, we are recording this session and we will send it out to all registrants uh, within the week. Today we'll be examining data from our social intelligence report. This report captures data from over 200 publishers in the BuzzFeed Partner Network. The report provides publishers and brands the tools to better understand how people are discovering news and entertainment content. In today's session, you'll walk away with trends from across the web that can be translated into insights and actionable takeaways. We will share tips on how your brand can use these social platforms like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Pinterest to make your content on the social web work smarter. Ben Ronnie is the product lead of growth and data at BuzzFeed. Ben has worked in TV production and digital development at MTV Networks. Following that, he was the director of, partner of product management at Discovery Communications. Ben has a keen sense of curiosity for data the digital landscape, and emerging social platforms. In his current role, he applies these learnings daily via experimentation and discovery to find new ways to improve the BuzzFeed product on both desktop and mobile. Ben, excited to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Great. Hi, everyone, and welcome to BuzzFeed U. Again, my name is Ben Ronnie. I'm the product lead for growth and data here at BuzzFeed. And just to underscore what Jen said, we'll be talking today about some insights from our 2013 social intelligence report. And now the report was created with, from data from our 200 plus publishers in the BuzzFeed Partner Network. And the goal of the report was to really understand and learn how users are discovering and reading new article content. So before we dive into that, I wanted to talk a little bit about the environment in which the data was captured and something that's also core to BuzzFeed's ideology. Social is quickly becoming the new starting point. So years ago, uh, not too many years ago, users discovered content through portals. Uh, AOL, Yahoo, um, MSN, these are all places where people discovered content daily. Then, as search algorithms improved, uh, sites got better at making sure their content appeared in search, and users were confident that they could find what they were looking for, uh, discovery shifted to search. Now, it's quickly becoming social. So, if you just take a minute and think about the last piece of news and entertainment content that you looked at, think about where you found it from, right? So, let's look at some data about this. Social networks are becoming the new homepages. According to the 2013 Social Intelligence Report, when we look at total referrals to publisher content, in January of 2013, they were around 11%. And then by December 2013, they had more than doubled. Now, it's not illustrated here in the graph, but in January, about 75% of all content was discovered from users going to publishers uh, and brands' websites and homepages. By December 2013, that had dropped to just over half. So think about that piece of content that you were looking at. What device were you looking at it on? Well, if you came from a social channel, more than likely, you were looking at it on a mobile device. Social users are mobile users. Now, according to information from these companies, 75% of Twitter users, 75% of Pinterest users, and 78% of Facebook users are accessing the sites through mobile devices. Now, of that 78% of Facebook users, 48% are mobile only. That means they don't even look at the desktop version of Facebook. 
So how do we use this information to our advantage? Well, it's simple. Focus on mobile. That means design and performance. They are important to the mobile experience. Uh, approach future projects with a mobile first mentality and dedicate time every week to be mobile only. When I talk about design and performance, what I mean is design, uh, things have to work well on the mobile phone. Tiny buttons on tiny screens are not a good user experience. That's just one example. And performance. The website has to load quickly. When people are dealing with slow internet connections and data plans, the difference in a few seconds can mean the user sticking around to see your content or not. When I talk about a mobile first mentality, what I mean is to think about new products and features through the lens of mobile first. How will it work on your mobile phone? Now, if it doesn't work on mobile, do you really need it on desktop? And if you move forward, remember that there's a good chance, according to the last slide, that three quarters of the audience may not even see it. And also, dedicate time every week to be mobile only. Personally, I try to take 30 minutes out of every day to do everything on my mobile phone, from reading emails, to creating content, to consuming content. It really gives you a better idea of the advantages and the limitations of the platform and lets you see what most of your users are seeing. So now that we understand the environment and some of the trends, let's talk more specifically about some of the platforms. Facebook. I don't really need to ask how many people watching this are on Facebook. It's probably most or all of you. Facebook is a major source of traffic. Now, according to the Social Intelligence Report, Facebook is driving more social traffic to publishers. In the beginning of 2013, 56% of total social referrals to our partner network co uh, content was being driven by Facebook. By December, that had grown to 76%. Now, not only has the proportion of traffic grown, but actually the raw number of social referrals have grown too. So what we're actually seeing is them driving a bigger slice of a bigger pie. So knowing that Facebook is driving more content to more, to more, to more publishers, what can we do to ensure that we are getting the most, the most bang for our buck. Well, maximize your impact on the Facebook newsfeed. Post content that inspires users to share with their friends. Initiate conversation through calls to action and by asking questions. And use visuals like photos and videos to stand out in users' feeds. So when we say post content that inspires, uh, that means share content that involves users' identity or includes practical value like promos or discounts or useful information, or posts that trigger emotions like happiness or awe or inspiration. This will get people to share it with their friends. Also, initiating conversation through calls to action and asking questions that require users to respond in some way, when they respond, it then takes your content and spreads it out to their networks as well. And finally, Facebook feeds can be very crowded. So using photos and videos really helps it stand out. Here's a good example here. This is a post from Virgin Mobile, who is a BuzzFeed partner. They've got a nice big image with some catchy text, and that's got over 11,000 likes when this screenshot was taken just a few days ago. So moving on from Facebook, another very important so source of social traffic is Pinterest. So Pinterest had a big year in 2013. According to the Social Intelligence Report, Pinterest traffic to publisher content in the BuzzFeed Partner Network grew almost 100%. So it more than doubled. Uh, the biggest spike was around the, uh, was around the holidays, and that means Halloween, uh, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. So knowing that Pinterest is now a valuable source of content, how do we make sure that our content is getting the proper exposure? Well, the answer lies in customizing your content for the Pinterest audience. 33% of U.S. women online use Pinterest. 75% uh, access Pinterest via the mobile app, and usage peaks in the evenings and the weekends. Let's take a minute to look at that again. 33% of U.S. women online use Pinterest. According to a recent Pew Research study, one-third of U.S. women online use Pinterest. That is amazing. Also, 75% access via the mobile app. Now, while we know that 75% access uh, access it mobily, this means specifically through the Pinterest app itself. So make sure that anything you do is actually working properly in the app. 
And finally, if you're posting content that you want to target towards women, make sure that it's, it's there on the evening and the weekends when they are. Now, at BuzzFeed, we've seen particular success using these collage-style headers, which, as you can see here, sort of tease the photo content that'll be in the post. They have a nice font, uh, different aesthetic, and we also make sure that all images on the site have large, visible pinned buttons. Right, so there's Pinterest. Let's talk about another well-known social channel, Twitter. So when it comes to Twitter, the secret really lies in Twitter's ability to own the conversation around live events and breaking news. According to the 2013 intelli Social Intelligence Report, Twitter drove the most traffic to publisher content during the Boston Marathon bombing and the weeks following Miley Cyrus's VMA performance. So, how can we ensure that our content is part of this conversation? Well, first of all, use Twitter to distribute news-based content. Also, tweet popular stories several times, be responsive, and embed images and experiment with vines. So, Twitter really is the best place for time-sensitive and culturally relevant news-based content. Also, just like Facebook, a Twitter feed can be very crowded, so there's no shame in tweeting your popular stories out several times to make sure it gets the exposure it deserves. Now, Twitter is also a direct conduit to your audience. So when we say be responsive, we mean really use it as a chance to respond directly and to speak to your audience. Uh, using hashtags and ad signs was specifically designed to make sure that people's brands and identities are called out. Remember, prompt and human feedback can be rewarded. Also, play around with using images in your tweets and vines, which are short videos actually created by the co-founders of Twitter. We've seen here at BuzzFeed that tweets with images and vines gets more retweets on both mobile and desktop. So moving away from Twitter to a more specialized network, LinkedIn. So LinkedIn had a very big year in 2013. According to the Social Intelligence Report, it, it became a very valuable content platform with referrals to publisher content growing more than 250%. What kind of content is driving this kind of growth? Well, here are the top stories from the report that were shared the most. Uh, the lamest startup office in America, Marissa Meyer's latest HR scandal, and the four worst job hunting tips of all time. Are we sensing a theme? Yes, we are. It seems obvious, but create content for professionals. Share content that's relevant to the workplace. Uh, post in LinkedIn subgroups for better targeting, and post during business hours. So when we say content that's relevant to the workplace, what that means is anything from uh, interview tips to career advice to how to properly use email. It doesn't have to be all about the job, but it should be related to professional development. To post, posting in LinkedIn subgroups helps you better target your audience. If you're looking for, let's say, product managers, there's tons of subgroups on LinkedIn targeted specifically for them. And also, it's an obvious one, but post during business hours. People feel comfortable looking at LinkedIn while on the job. This is a place for professional betterment, so make sure that you're posting your content when they're looking at it. So while we've looked at a little bit of these social channels, the known social channels, it's important to anticipate what's coming next, and what opportunities we can take advantage of in the future. That's why we're going to talk a little bit about dark social. You may have heard the term before. It's an industry-wide term that refers to direct traffic from messaging apps, emails, chats, and texts that doesn't have any information about the refer. Now, if you think about why we consider a majority of our direct traffic to be dark, uh, most Article URLs have a lot of slashes and numbers and dashes, and it's highly unlikely that people are typing in the whole thing and going directly there. Most likely, they're copying the URL and texting it or emailing it. Here at BuzzFeed, we email and chat links to each other all the time. So what does this mean in the future? Well, according to the intelligence report, in January, about 6% of direct traffic to publisher posts came from dark social. By the end of the year, that had more than doubled. So there's clearly a trend that this is an emerging, it's an emerging traffic source. Now, if anybody saw the excitement around WhatsApp in the last couple of weeks, that's a perfect example of how big and important a back-channel messaging app can be for distributing content. So how can we, as publishers and brands, make sure that we're taking full advantage? Well, it's simple. Make sure that all content is easy to share. Introduce a convenient copy link option, uh, use a URL shortener, and try integrating messaging apps. So, 
Because as I mentioned, people are likely copying the link, making it as easy as possible for them to grab the link with one click or one tap is going to increase your chances of them sharing your content. Also, for people who are sending text messages or tweets where it might be, uh, they might be limited by character space, having a compact URL through a URL shortening service might also make it easier. And finally, play around with integrating messaging apps. Just a few months ago, BuzzFeed noticed the trend and included a WhatsApp button on our mobile web experience. Now, while we don't have detailed information about the referrals it drives, what we do know is that in the time that we had it there, it got more clicks on that button than the Twitter button. And in fact, the WhatsApp, the WhatsApp usage has doubled in the last two months. So now that we've seen the environment, we've seen the various social channels, what are the main takeaways? The main takeaways are this. One, be mobile first. I can't stress that enough. Second, maintain a social presence that matches user behavior, whether that means posting on evenings and weekends or during business hours. And finally, tailor content for specific platforms, be it news-based, professional-based, or identity. Well, thanks very much, everybody, for listening. And uh, be sure to share what you learned here with uh, at BuzzFeed U. And Thanks, Jen. Ben. <laughs> All right. Cool. Thanks so much, Ben. All right, that was a very interesting and informative discussion. And thank you all for joining BuzzFeed University. Um, as Ben just mentioned, please keep in touch with us at BuzzFeed U. This is where we'll uh, definitely let you know of the next webcast, the next live event that we have going on. So stay in touch, stay tuned, and we look forward to uh, you know working with you and speaking with you in the near future.